Opposition leader Kamal Pisan Bisasa says there is a political web that surrounds the late Malcolm Jones and the government. Speaking at the Monday night forum in Sangri Grandi, Mrs. Pisan Bisasa explained what she believes is the real bullet payment for Patrick. Ian Wayson has more. Making reference to the Privy Council's decision to uphold the appeal by UNC activist Ravi Balgobin Maraj, who tried to get witness statements used by the state to discontinue the lawsuit against former Petrotrin chairman Malcolm Jones, Kamla Pasad Bisesa accused the government of protecting him. Mrs. Pasad Bisesa asserted the reason why Petrotrin is in debt is because of bad decisions by Mr. Jones. He signed up to guarantee for Petrotrin to guarantee to pay back this loan. So all these projects bust, if you want to put it in labor language. They bust. But Petrotrin, through the hand of Malcolm Jones on his board, signed a guarantee. That is why we are owing all that money up to today. They will become due in August. That's a bullet payment they keep saying they have to make. She said when the UNC was in government, it was advised that they, through Petrotrin, file a lawsuit against Mr. Jones. However, a particular lawyer who recently made headlines had advised the PNM government in October 2015 to withdraw the lawsuit. She identified who was the lawyer. A name that is all over the country right now. A fellow named Vincent Nelson QC. She also stated who advised the UNC government to sue Mr. Jones in the first place. So the same lawyer who says sue Malcolm Jones, government changed what happened, he turned wrong and backtrack, backpedal, and say withdraw the case. Change is tune. The opposition leader is suggesting collusion and questions the motives behind the decisions regarding Petrotrin and its executive chairman. Ian Wason, TTT News. But the Attorney General Faris al Rawi says the opposition leader's comments in relation to the ruling of the Privy Council in the Malcolm Jones Petrotrin matter are a deliberate misrepresentation of the facts. Responding specifically to Mrs. Basad Bissessa's claim of collusion between government and Queen's Council Vincent Nelson, the Attorney General challenged the public to question why the opposition leader would seek to put out such an idea. Ask yourselves why. Is it not a fact that Mr. Nelson is giving evidence in criminal proceedings against the Attorney General past Mr. Ram Logan and Mr. Ramdeen? Fact number two, that is a matter for the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Commissioner of Police. That has nothing to do with the government. He pointed out the corruption charges both men face have nothing to do with government, given that criminal proceedings are handled by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. He also rejected the opposition's claim that the Privy Council's ruling was a landmark decision. The matter which went to the Privy Council was an appeal to the Privy Council on the leave or lack of leave for judicial review. This case did not concern any determination of what the law in relation to the Freedom of Information Act was about. He also said he intends to write to the Privy Council to report the opposition's sharing of a clip from the hearing, which he pointed out goes against the Privy Council's rules as seen on their website. That deliberate re-editing of the clips from the Privy Council is something I intend to report to the Privy Council because it makes a mockery of the truth. Meanwhile, Ravi Maraj, the litigant who sought a disclosure of documents related to Petrotrin's failed world gas to liquids plant deal, has described the Attorney General's position on the Privy Council's ruling as embarrassing. He spoke to members of the media outside of Mr. Al Rawi's office on Tuesday afternoon. The thing about it is that this matter is something that is in the public's interest and uh, the Privy Council Lords has said specifically that the government appears to be um, hiding um, information that is in the public's um, interest and that is what I'm trying to get to. 
He maintained there is no political motivation in his pursuit. In the, in the filings, I did indicate that I was politically affiliated and that I'm a card-carrying member of the United National Congress. That was only for transparency in the matter. But in terms of the case itself, I'm doing this as an individual, as, an, as, a, as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, nothing more. Just to remind you of Monday's judgment by the Privy Council, while Mr. Mirage's appeal was dismissed in so far as it was based upon Limb 1 of Section 35, Mr. Mirage's appeal was allowed in so far as it was based upon Limb 2 of Section 35. In upholding the appeal by the UNC activist, the judges noted to say that there is a public interest in understanding the role that political factors may have played in the decision to abandon the claim against Mr. Jones is very different from saying that there is evidence that significant abuse of authority, neglect in the performance of official duty, or unauthorized use of public funds has occurred or is likely to have occurred.